Good morning. Okay, we are continuing the problem about predicate logic. I don't have the definitions here that we're using for obs, order, before, at, and met, but if you looked at the previous problems then you saw those. And we want to take a bunch of predicates that are going to be described below in English and we want to translate them into predicate logic. So we have known p1, p2, and that should mean that p1 and p2 have met each other both ways. So p1 has met p2 and p2 has met p1. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. We want to say P1 has met P2. And P2 has met P1. Now let's just double check here. We're defining a predicate, known, and it's got two parameters, P1 and P2. Both of those should be unbound in the definition. We do not want them to be bound. If they're bound, then we're ignoring the value that we receive from the definition. And sure enough, they're both unbound, and any other variables, of which there are none, are bound. So we're good. Well, let's move on. Nexus i means that everyone was at event i. Okay, so i was a nexus, an important point. So we want to say everyone was at the event. We've got our predicate at. Uh, from the previous page, we know at looks like at pi, and that means person p was at event i. Uh, and let's just actually copy that right into place, because we are going to want to quantify p, because we want to say everyone, every person. And we're given i. i is a parameter here. So we'll leave that unbound, but p needs to be bound. We want p to be every single person, so we'll say for all p in p. So now it says every person was at whatever event i was. And we're done. So those two weren't too hard. Traveler P means that person P observed some distinct pair of events to occur in the opposite order to the way that they actually happened. And distinct pair means two things that are different from each other. So we have two different events. Uh, and we know how to say that right away. That's one of our idioms. So we want to say there is some event I some event j, i is not equal to j, and, and we're ready to say something more about those events. So p observed i and j to occur in the opposite order to the way they actually happened. So we have obs order, that's the order that someone observes something to happen in. And we have before, that's the order that things actually happen in. So we're going to use those two. So obs order is going to be in the opposite order of before. Obs order p i j. And if I run out of space, so I'll just go down to the next line. Before j i. OK, so we say traveler p means there's some pair of events, i and j, that are not the same and P observed I occurring before J, but J actually happened before I. Great. Okay, now, companion P. This means that person P is a traveler who was at more than one event with Doc, but is not Doc. Oh boy, that's gonna be a lot to say. All right, well, let's start with P is a traveler. We've already defined traveler, so we'll just say P is a traveler. is a traveler. And, okay, P is a traveler, and P was at more than one event with Doc. So P was at one event, P was at another event that's different, and we already did that, we're just going to reuse it. Doc was at one event, Doc was at another event that's different, um, at the same events, and this person P is not Doc. Let's start with that, because that's the easiest thing. P is not Doc. And we're going to need two events that are different from each other. That's just the pattern we did above, so I'll just recopy that. i is not equal to j. And, okay, so we have two events that are different from each other. And p was at both of those events, and Doc was at both of those events. So at p i and at p j 
and at dock i and at dock j. Okay, let's make sure we've set everything here. Uh, well, actually, let's start by checking our variable. So our parameter p should be unbound, and it is. And we shouldn't have any other unbound variables. So i and j are only used inside here, and they're bound by these quantifiers. So that's all good. We do have doc in here, but doc's not a variable. Doc is a particular person in the world, so that's OK to use. And it looks like that's good. All right, so P is a traveler who is at more than one event with doc. Now, you might wonder whether we should use a, an arrow here, a conditional, like we would with the universal, or an and. Um, I tend to think of this as P is one particular person, and it's up to whatever's outside of this to quantify companion. So with one particular person, we want to say they are a traveler, and they did all these other things, uh, much like with an existential. So what if someone uses for all P, companion P? What if they say something like this? then they are saying that everyone is a traveler because every companion is a traveler so they really should be saying everyone is a traveler um, so that's not a problem that looks okay now so we said p is a traveler okay uh, we then skipped to p is not doc that's good and then we said p was at more than one event with doc so there's two different events P was at both of them, Doc was at both of them. Looks good.